Hi everyone and welcome back to the Zombies. In this video we'll go through the final story mission of Modern Warfare Zombies Saga, The Ascension. Let's begin with your loadout. The mission is reasonably difficult, probably the hardest one out of the story missions. So if you have all the fancy stuff, in particular golden plates and ether blades, take them. You won't regret it. But if you don't, that's okay too. I'll be showing the way without any of that. For the weapons, definitely take the RGL, especially if you're not bringing ether blades with you. If you have a conversion kit for RGL unlocked, definitely use that and switch to slugs grenades. Not only it will help with special zombies, but it also removes most of the smoke from explosions, which will greatly help with your visibility. As your second weapon, bring anything automatic you like. AR preferably, but SMG or battle rifle or LMG would do too. You'll only need this gun for the boss fight. In terms of rarity, you want your RGL to be at least purple and your second gun legendary. If you don't have any legendary tools stashed, don't bring the secondary weapon at all and instead buy a legendary one from the wall in the round. Again, you'll only be using that weapon for the boss, all the rest is RGL driven. Of course, both weapons need to be at Pekka Punch 3 level. Again, if you don't have any crystals or you don't want to use them, just play your round normally, get yourself enough cash and do the upgrades. You also want all the perks. There's no reason not to have them, so just buy everything. If you really are tight on cash, you can skip the death perception, but that's about it. Use your RGL in the round to clear some ether nests and find a brain rot ammo mod and put it on your RGL. It's particularly useful in the mission since mimics are very very annoying there and brain rot boosts your damage against them. Fill the rest of your backpack with self revives and maybe a few sentries, but mainly self revives. Mistakes happen and having an extra insurance goes a long way towards your survivability. So as many as you can find and buy, take them all. Many people like to take the Scorcher, but honestly this particular mission is probably where it's least useful, since you have many jump pads all along the mission path. A bit of an extra speed getting from one place to another is just not worth sacrificing your other weapon for it, so keep your Scorcher for when you go into the Dark Aether. That's about all the prep you need, so head over to the Palace Square in F5 grid in the Red Zone. That's where the portal is located, as well as the pedestals for all the relics needed to open the new Dark Aether. Interact with the portal, vote yes on the map, and off you go. Once you load in, you'll find yourself in Al Masra city, with a high rise in the middle of it and tons of floating islands in the air. You'll also see two light beams going up in the sky, which indicate your first two mission locations. As soon as the timer goes off and you can move, start making your way towards the beam on the right side of the high rise. There's multiple ways to get there, which one you take doesn't really matter. Any red crystals you can see can be shot to turn them into the ether launch pads that allow for really fast traversal. Once you get to the required island, you'll see the obelisk at the center and four relics spread around. Collect them all. The gloves are in the plain sight next to the large blue crystal, the drum is in the train car, the target is on the platform car next to it and the mirror is behind the wall on the edge of the island. All these should be familiar to you since they are the four relics we used to open the second Dark Aether Rift in Said City. After a brief timeout, you can activate the obelisk. Do so and start killing zombies around it while Ava is busy with the critical task of staring at the magical light while you do all the work. Both Ava and Ravenov are completely invulnerable, so don't worry about protecting them, just concentrate on mass murdering the undead. A 
Eventually the cube meter will fill up and you can proceed to the next point. Since the second obelisk is on the ground level, you can basically just beeline to it. Once you get to the obelisk, there's four more relics to collect here. The drawing is on top of the truck, giraffe is on the ground next to the obelisk, science journal is up on the small floating island towards the high rise and the laptop is on the ground level behind a small wall to the right of the obelisk if you look from the science journal location. Repeat the routine with activating the obelisk and killing the zombies around it. By this time, mimics should be coming in large numbers and can be pretty irritating throwing you around and off the path you want. This will continue to be a thing for the rest of the mission, so try not to get distracted by it too much, it's just a minor irritation on your way. About half the way through filling the obelisk, Ava screws something up on the process and loses three of the relics we so carefully gathered for her. So you need to fix it again. This time the relics are clearly indicated with the mission markers, but instead of sitting still, they are floating in the air. If the relic seems to be in the unreachable spot, give it a few seconds to move. They drift around the same area and each ends up being in the spot that it's easy to collect. I managed to mess up pretty much every jump I made here, so yeah, don't be me, be patient and collect them where they are easy to pick up. Once you got all of them back, return to your killing spree to feed whatever it needs feeding in the obelisk. Once finished, you need to make your way to the top of the high rise. From the obelisk, head straight east using the jump pads on your way and you should land at the base of the high tower. There you should see a train floating up, which you need to jump onto to make your way to the floating island about half the way up. Beware of two manglers in the tower window, as they can knock you off the train, either kill them or dodge their projectiles. Once you made it to the island, jump off the train and hop onto any of the string of buses and boats going further up on the other side. <laughs> 
You'll notice that Ava and Ravenov conveniently just teleport ahead of you using their magical powers or whatever, but you still gotta do the parkour, because why not, right? On your way up, there's another window with a mangler, and you may also notice yellow glowing inside. That's the guaranteed spawn for R4D detector, which is used for various easter eggs, but for the mission itself, it's not required and can be safely ignored for now. Once you made it to the top, break the crystal on the other side of the roof and use the jump pad to get into the green ether tear. That will land you on the next string of floating islands higher above. Follow the string of jumps to land on a larger island. Your next jump will look like a miss, but it's intended. Just open your parachute and keep flying onto a smaller island behind it. From there, you can jump onto your target island using the jump pad. Turn around and hop onto the bus roof. If you miss the jump, open up your parachute again and get back on the small island and then back up. These buses are bouncing back and forth, so you need to ride one until it's close to another. Then jump over and repeat this once again until you can hop over to the next island. Another set of jumps follows, that's pretty straightforward until the last one leads you to the tear. This teleports you onto the ship high in the skies. We are almost there. Proceed through the ship towards the ether tear and use it to be teleported to the final battleground. Jump off the edge and fly towards the big island at the center. You should see the four relics from Albagra Dark Ether in the middle. That's where you need to go. The entity appears at this point and as soon as her health bar is visible, three orbs will pop on her. Use your secondary weapon to shoot them. Each time you hit one, Entity loses some health. Try to be reasonably quick about it. If you don't destroy all the orbs, the Entity will eventually relocate and reset them. Once all the orbs are destroyed, the Entity will jump to another island. I find it easier to follow her, but in fact, the orbs can be shot from pretty far away, so you can try that too if you want. Don't worry about missing a jump. If you fall off the island, you'll be teleported back and find yourself above the battlefield. In this stage, Entity has two attacks. Her left hand emits a powerful beam that damages very, very quickly, but it's pretty easy to dodge. If it hits you when you have no armor, you'll go down immediately. The right hand attack is area damage one, targeting whole islands. The best way to avoid those is to either be in the air or on a different island when the attack lands. If you don't have armor and get caught in it, it's an instant down as well. Otherwise, it's just an instant armor break. So, if you came here without golden plates, make sure to replate non-stop. Forgetting to restore your armor is the easiest way to burn through all of the self-revives very quickly and eventually die. Keep at it until the entity runs out of health.
Once done, reach the fake reward rift to initiate the second stage of the fight. This time the entity spawns in invulnerable state, which is indicated by her health bar turning white. She'll perform a new version of the laser attack, this time with two beams, and then relocate. Mission marker will show the new location and you need to get kills around Ava so she charges her own attack that breaks Entity's shield. Why the good character needs to fill her power with souls of murdered zombies to fight the evil is not exactly clear to me, but who am I to ask? I'm just here to shoot. Once you shoot enough zombies, Entity is vulnerable again. She'll emerge with 7 orbs that are always in the same locations and start charging her area damage attack, which now covers every single island in the area. You can try dodging the attack, but I prefer to just tank it and use the time to shoot the orbs. Just make sure you have some armor on you and you survive the attack. Once either all orbs are destroyed or she lands the attack, Entity relocates and the process repeats. Use this time to replenish your armor plates, ammo and so on. After doing the laser attack again, the entity relocates and you need to feed the Dr. Jensen with more corpses to be able to keep fighting her sister. That's some family there, right? Note that the two orbs on Entity's chest are weird. I'm sure it's just a skill issue on my part, but I really struggle to get my hits to register on them. So I would recommend shooting other five orbs first and then try to get the chest ones. That way you maximize the damage per turn instead of wasting ammo. That's basically the way. Keep at it until the Entity is dead. Try not to waste much time fighting the regular zombies. You don't really want the mission timer to run out, since then the whole area will be covered in ether storm and you'll die pretty quickly.
eventually you'll make it through the fight and the reward rift appears. Grab Mr. Pix from it, you're gonna need it to unlock the Dark Aether portal back in Urzikstan. Then proceed through the portal and enjoy the final cinematic. Hope this was helpful, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.